Afternoon everyone, today's video is on adaptation. It's more of a common sense topic, but I do know that some of you struggle with it, so I don't want to ignore it. Right, adaptation, that is to do with organisms and them having characteristics which mean that they are better suited for a particular environment. I'm going to take it from an animal that lives in a cold environment, an animal that lives in a hot environment, and we're also going to have a look at plants. So let's just dive straight in to looking at things like polar bears and arctic foxes. Right, what you will find is, first of all, they have white fur, Y for camouflage, so they blend into the surroundings. They have something like a polar bear, I'm going to actually use that. They have large feet, Y to stop themselves sinking into the snow, because if you have larger feet, then you have a larger area to spread their weight over. It's the same reason why skis work, is because you just don't sink in as much. Right, what else do they have? They have small ears. Why? Because they need a small surface area here because they want to minimise their heat loss to the surroundings as obviously it's very cold and they want to keep warm. They'll have a thick layer of fat for insulation. They'll have thick fur for the same reason to conserve heat. If they ask you stuff like, oh, adaptations for catching prey, then you need to talk about sharp teeth for tearing into flesh, long legs so they can run fast, but they don't usually ask that. It's more of adaptations to their environment. If we take an animal in a hot country, something like a camel that lives in a desert, again they have large feet so that they don't sink into the sand. They have large ears to increase the surface area to maximise the amount of heat that they can lose because obviously they don't want to overheat under the hot desert sun. You'll find that they have long eyelashes which will prevent sand getting into their eyes. They have thin fur, thin layer of fat to minimise the amount of heat that they maintain. So basically any common sense answers like that, there was often like six mark questions on these sorts of things, so yeah, just make sure you've got some sensible answers. Right, lastly let's look at the cactus. Now the cactus um, obviously again lives in the hot environment, it stores water in its stem, it has spines rather than leaves and what that does is it prevents water loss by transpiration. They have shallow extensive roots. Um, I hope that makes sense to you. Basically their roots spread out a very long way, metres and metres away from the actual plant and what that means is if it rains then what can happen is that the plant can absorb as much of that water even if it's really far from them as possible. If you're looking at something like meringue grass what happens is it rolls itself up, its leaves, so what that means is that when the leaves transpire that water that they've transpired gets trapped close to the leaf and it kids the plant into thinking that it's humid and therefore less water is lost by transpiration. If that's not clear check out my video on transpiration and the plant leaf structure. Um, right, I think, I think that is everything that I wanted to say. I will find some questions to attach at the end. Use your common sense. You must score highly on these questions because they're kind of the best sorts of questions that they can ask you. Don't forget to subscribe. Please tell your friends about my channel and it's always really nice when you like my videos, so do that as well. And I'll see you very soon. So here's my first question I'm going through and make sure you use good English here. Animals and plants have features, adaptations that allow them to survive in the conditions in which they normally live. Describe how animals and plants are adapted to survive in dry conditions such as deserts. For each adap adaptation that you give, describe how the adaptation helps the animal or plant to survive in dry conditions. To obtain full marks, you should refer to both animals and plants. Right, so break your um, answer into two. Start by talking about either the plant or the animal and make sure that every single adaptation you give, you give a reason as to why that is beneficial. So let's start with the cactus. Right, so the cactus lives in hot deserts. What does it have that makes it special? It has a fleshy thick stem to store water. It has spines instead of leaves, which prevents water loss by transpiration. And it also means that it has fewer stomata for the same reason. You'll find that it has extensive shallow roots, which means that it can gain as much water as possible when it rains. The cactus is now done. Let's look at the camel now. So, what do we know about camels? Just try and visualise it in your head and go through every part of its body, which means it's ad adapted. So, first of all, it has humps. Remember that these don't store water, they store fat, which can be converted to water. They have long eyelashes, which stops the sun getting into their eyes. They have thin fur and a thin layer of fat to, again, decrease the amount of heat that they retain. And lastly, they have large feet, and that stops them sinking into the sand. So, yeah, lots of points. I really like this question. Plants and animals have become adapted in many different ways to reduce the risk of being eaten by predators. Describe these adaptations, give examples of animals and plants adapted in the ways you describe. So again, break up your answer. Three marks on an animal, three marks on a plant. So let's choose the rabbit for our animal. How does it escape its predators? So first of all, it has long legs, long limbs, which means that it can outrun the predator. It uses camouflage. Rabbits have that kind of mottled grey-brown colour so that they blend into their surroundings more, so they're 
the predator is less likely to see the prey. So you do need to make sure that whatever feature you provide, you say how that will actually help the animal to survive. Um, and then remember, it has large ears, so obviously it can hear the prey coming, so it can run away faster, and it has its eyes on the side of its head, which gives it a much better peripheral vision, so it can see all the way around, pretty much, and therefore see any predators coming. You find with plants that they'll have thorns or prickles or spines, and that will make it very painful, so therefore the predator is less likely to eat it, because I don't think any predator out there thinks their cactus is a particularly good thing to eat. Um, and it has... Often they have warning colours, so by being brightly coloured it will warn the predator that it is dangerous and poisonous to eat. So yeah, just six different points, all backed up, and you will no doubt get all the marks available for this question.